Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about four areas where you may be measuring the performance of your battery incorrectly. We're gonna go and identify these four items through the video, and hopefully that will help you improve your own measuring capabilities for your lithium battery packs. Now, on this channel, we focus a lot on measuring performance of a battery pack just based off of having your own tools at your own home. And in this case, it is a charger to measure the internal resistance resistance and measuring internal resistance we've also proven on the channel that there's a direct relationship when you measure internal resistance with the same method every single time and you actually measure the loaded performance you're going to see that internal resistance relationship as it goes up and down is going to match the performance that you get out of it with this load test with this data set we can definitively say that the internal resistance is a good suggestion to you as the user of a battery pack how good and how well that battery is going to perform in your radio control vehicle application. We've tested many battery packs over the last 12 to 14 months or so, and I want to thank the Patreon supporters for your contribution to help make this possible. If you want to join in on this, I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get started and talk about the very first item that we have here on the list of four. The very first item on our list is going to talk and speak to ambient temperature. Ambient temperature is definitely a contributor to fluctuation within measurements for internal resistance while you're charging up your batteries. If you're charging your battery packs upside, you're gonna be subjecting them to a massive significant difference from day to day or even from hour to hour. If you're ultimately trying to compare one battery to another, this is not the best method to use because your results will definitely vary. What is ideal here is to try to keep the temperature within a degree or so plus or minus half a degree of a selected temperature and then you can get the best results if this is not practical or possible for you then just try to keep it within the tightest margin that you possibly can with your setup in your environment the next couple items on our list deal with the charge current that we're placing on the battery. As we begin to charge the battery pack, you wanna take that internal resistance measurement quite early in that charge state. You wanna do this approximately around the one minute mark. That's typically what we do here on this channel. At the one minute mark of charging, we take our internal resistance measurement. Now this is important because if we continue to charge and we don't take this measurement at the one minute mark, the current that is flowing through the battery pack is passing through an internal resistance as we know that's what we're measuring and this creates a bunch of heat and that heat influences the chemistry within the battery pack and just like what we talked about there with our ambient temperature the heating through the current of the battery pack is also going to affect and change the internal resistance measurement that you take so if you take it at one minute you're going to get a very different measurement at that one minute versus the five minute mark versus the 10 minute mark at the end of the day what you want to do here is keep it consistent pick a reasonable time if your charger doesn't do it at the one minute mark you're going to want to take that very first reading that you get at whatever time that is and make that standard for yourself now in addition to that another thing that we have to talk about is the actual current if we do have current fluctuations or variations within our charge this is also going to lead to results that do not give you the most accurate data or at least the most consistent data so when this happens in our charge cycle is every single charge right near the very end of the charge cycle. What you tend to see is that the battery remains at constant current, and then once it reaches peak voltage for that cell, you're gonna maintain constant voltage, which means your current is gonna drop off the table going from that charge current that you selected all the way to zero when the charge is terminated. Now, as it's going through this fluctuation, this is where you're gonna see differences within that measurement, within the internal resistance measurement. And especially if your battery pack is out of balance, and it needs to balance the cells, you're gonna see even more of an influence there on cell resistance. So as soon as anyone at the field says, you know, here's my resistance that I got at the very end of my charge, one of the first things that I know is happening here is that the internal resistance is going to be heavily skewed by these types of conditions that's happening with the current as the current changes and fluctuates at the end of that charge. This is gonna make the results inaccurate. And my best advice here is to go back, like we said earlier, Earlier and take that internal resistance mark at the one minute mark and then forget about all the rest of the internal resistance measurements because they will not match that consistency that you have if you take it at the one minute mark every single time. 
Now let's move into the very last item that we have here and that deals with not using the balance connector on your lithium polymer battery pack. If you find yourself not using that balance connector, what you'll notice is that the measurement that you're taking is not through the balance taps that essentially have zero current flowing through them. You're gonna have tons of current flowing through the actual main leads and this is gonna highly influence your results and more than likely it's gonna drive your results up because now you have introduced additional circuitry. My recommendation would be to use that balance tap every single time you're taking that internal resistance and to go a step above that and every single time you are charging, use that balance tap. This is a good way to maintain the safety of our pack to make sure all the cells are within a reasonable amount of balance and this is gonna give you maximum performance while maximizing the amount of safety that you have for every single run that you do and for every single charge cycle that you make. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. As always, like the video if you like battery pack performance and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in another one of these videos. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.